Hello there. Back once again with my Print Shift Prusa Mini. This is the part ejection system on a conveyor belt. I have a very nice, reliable part ejecting printer. And I want to improve the rest of the machine. So this video will actually apply to any Prusa Mini. I'm going to be replacing the stock extruder with a Bontech dual geared extruder. A little reasoning why. This is the stock. I've taken the liberty of removing them already. It has just the single drive gear. Mine is idler. Only this guy will sit in there, pressing him against it. And with this system, the drive gear will tend to push flexible filaments down and get them caught into the idler. Had that happen a few times. Haven't been able to print flexible materials with this very successfully. So the goal of this endeavor is to enable flexible material printing on this machine. Let's check out the Bontex gearing instead. Here we have the uh, same extruder motor driving a 3 to 1 gear reduction, but that tooths into this gear and they both drive the filament. Another big thing to point out, look how tight this gap is. And if you can see this little ridge on there, hopefully that'll frame in proper. That ridge actually goes into the groove of here, so there's a very tight restriction on the filament going through. This is just for tensioning the part, or tensioning the idler. And this is a drop-in replacement. So, the original extruder is mounted right back here. This is mounted in the same place using the original motor. Then go ahead and install it, run a test print. The only part you need from the original extruder parts is the um, Bowden coupler and that short PTFE tube. You reuse the same motor. The extruder is backwards, um, runs backwards, shall we say. Give me a minute to try and... So the motor comes in and drives both of these gears, but on the original extruder, the film is actually driven underneath the gear. On the Bontech, the film is driven over the gear, so the filament path here is slightly different, and because of that, the bowden needs to be going this direction to feed, whereas this guy needs to go this direction to feed. So the final step is to swap some wires on the stepper motor cable so that the motor will run in reverse. You also do need to edit your start.g code, change the uh, steps per millimeter for the Prusa Mini to make this run correctly. Alright, so, either in, both sides on, all the gears are in place, looks good. It's a fairly simple build. First thing to do is get this guy in, taking the coarse threaded part. So this Bontech unit is 3D printed, but it is centered uh, nylon. I believe it's fiber reinforced. Very nice, well made parts, but they are plastic, so you don't want to torque it too much with your wrench. Good and tight. Second thing to do is to put the drive gear on the motor. This has a set screw on a flat. You want about one zip tie's worth of gap there. You just kind of eyeball that. Only thing to note is that the gear is on with a smooth part forwards. The plastic gear engages, this gear will engage down to about here. So if you have this flipped around, then you're sort of in these grooves and you'll wear out the plastic gear and it won't function very well. This does need to be on there pretty tight. I always like to line things up as I'm going, so I can make sure that the motor cable is pointing down and away in the same direction it was before. We're going to hold the motor on with three M3 by 35 millimeter screws. This is all included in the Bontech kit. Just put them in very loosely. Make it easy to get the three in. There's only five screws in the whole kit. Three, or actually four M3 by 35s. Three of them are holding the motor on. And one of them is going to hold this whole assembly to the printer. And there's another, I think, was it 16 millimeter? Basically, you don't need to buy it, so... And again, this is plastic parts. You can give it a pretty good amount of torque, but you really don't want to be using an impact wrench or something crazy. That looks good. We have two of these. The long guy goes on the bottom. Short guy in the top. Now, before you start this, before you remove this extruder, make sure you pull your filament out. And before you take the plate off of your power, make sure you unplug it. We have very little chance of doing any damage in there. Right, so this guy, I think we want it right there into a push fit connector. It's not going very far. Let's get our idler screw in there while I'm staring at it. Quick note on the idler, they're using a brass heat set insert, so that cannot handle a huge amount of torque. 
Right, I don't know if you'd be able to great torque it out with just your fingers, but do be cautious. If you're finding you have to tighten this to that extent anyways, it's probably something else wrong with a jam further down the line. A little wrinkle with getting this guy on. You really do want two wrenches. One to hold the bottom in place so that it doesn't get over tightened into the plastic. And the other up top. I don't even go very tight on there because if there's a jam, I'm going to want to pop that out anyways. Alright, what's next? Let's get the cables in place and then we'll swap the wiring. Before you get the cables in place, be sure to extend the x-axis all the way. There's a little cutout here where the extruder motor goes. The Bontag includes three super skinny zip ties. One is angly on the bottom. Wow, oh, this goes together. Oops, you can put them in backwards. Very well made kit, nice parts, and just, you can tell they thought about the install. I'll link Bontech's instructions, they have nice step-by-step -step picture instructions, but really there's not a lot to uh, think about or to go wrong in this system. I am trying to keep the heads of the zip ties flat. There's not a lot of room on a Prusa Mini. Like you see the clearance there is quite small. The thing has been engineered within an inch of its life, which is nice, but makes modifying it a bit hard. Makes it even more impressive that this kit fits so well. Flush gutters too. These guys move. Very careful not to cut the wires. That would be an annoying repair at this point. This is your extruder motor wire. To reverse the set screw, we're going to switch the red and the blue wires. So black, green, red, blue. It should be black, green, blue, red. Okay. I've got a dental pick I like to use. Maybe a little safer. Tiny screwdriver. It's not quite good enough to fit in there. This is definitely one of the annoying parts. Vital when using the pick is don't stab yourself. It does hurt. There's a little tab on these guys. I'll show you when it and get them out. Generally, you just push on that tab. Should be able to slide these out. Nice. So after you do that, you can really use your pick to reseat the tab up. And vitally important, always good to double check that you don't have any power going in the machine. Unplugging a stepper motor while it's powered will very likely fly the board first. And we have to make sure that lock does engage. It's not quite doing it, so. This is where it's vitally important to have good lighting in your workshop. So that lock just prevents the cable from backing out. I see a lot of people doing this with the uh, X-Acto knife and all that too. And, I mean, that does work, it's just... You do have to be very careful with your sharp implements. Better. While you're here, you might as well check the other two. One of the nice things that Prusa does is these are labeled E for extruder. If you switch the wires on another motor, it will reverse the wrong one. You can also normally do this in the firmware settings, but on the Mini, that means you have to run unsigned firmware, so we're down to switching wires that we don't have to, you know, remove the little appendix and run unsigned code on it. Let's just go right to load development. Hello again. Go over to the computer to show you the preparations you got to do in the slicer to handle having the Bontech extruder. It uses a different E steps per millimeter than the stock extruder, and on a Prusa Mini, the current firmware 4.2, it does not have the ability to store these um, E steps per millimeter in the EEPROM, so you need to have it loaded at each print, or you could run it whenever you turn the printer on and it'll stay as long as you don't reboot. I'd like to put it into every G code file, which it's a little annoying in that now I have a printer that's different from my other minis, but I feel like that way it's less likely for me to make a mistake and have over extrusion. So over in your slicer, printer settings, the only thing we're adding is the M92 E415, 415 steps per millimeter. That's it. We're going to slice some lizards and print out a bunch of these guys now. Using continuous print to queue these up. I'll see, now we have quite a few lizards in the queue. 
Happy printing. In case you're not familiar, Print Shift is a platform attached to a Prusa Mini that will automatically remove parts from your bed after printing. I've got other videos in this channel explaining how it works and how to build your own. So we could not leave it at just printing Pet G. What we did do, Montek does a beautiful job with these guys. Trying out some TPU. Very first test print on it, but this is extraordinarily flexible even by TPU standards. You just wet noodle it. The main questions are, are we going to get any failures in the extruder or any jams or leakage from the nozzle? This is printing a flexible TPU zip tie and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Didn't have to help peel it off the bed, we'll uh, see what happens if you don't in a minute. I am very impressed with this Bontek extruder. The install was pretty easy and the print quality is amazing. Happy printing, guys. See you next time. Well, that's not gonna go well. <laughs> really surprised it made it all the way around. <laughs> oh well. That's why we test.